South American. Today, we're diving into the mystical world of South American mythology. From the ancient Inca gods to the vibrant folklore of the Amazonian tribes, South America's rich tapestry of myths is full of wonder and intrigue. Join us as we explore legendary deities, mythical creatures, and ancient stories that have shaped the cultures of this diverse continent. Whether you're a mythology buff or just curious about the magical side of South America, this video is for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more enchanting content. El Chupacabra The first reports of El Chupacabra emerged in the mid-1990s, specifically in Puerto Rico. In 1995, eight sheep were discovered dead, each with three puncture wounds in the chest area and completely drained of blood. This event triggered a wave of sightings and reports across the island. The descriptions of the creature varied, but common characteristics included a reptilian body, sharp spines along its back, and an ability to jump great distances. Some witnesses described it as being about three to four feet tall, with large, glowing red eyes, and a menacing, alien-like appearance. The initial sightings in Puerto Rico sparked a media frenzy, with local newspapers and television stations covering the story extensively. Soon, the legend of El Chupacabra spread beyond Puerto Rico, with reports surfacing from Mexico, Chile, Brazil, and other parts of Latin America. Interestingly, the creature's description began to change as the legend spread. In some regions, El Chupacabra was described more like a wild dog or a strange, hairless mammal, differing significantly from the original reptilian description. Characteristics and Behaviors El Chupacabra's characteristics are diverse, but certain traits are consistently reported. Its name, Goat Sucker, is a direct reference to its alleged method of attack, draining the blood of livestock, especially goats, through small puncture wounds. This vampiric trait sets El Chupacabra apart from other cryptids and has made it a particularly fearsome figure in rural areas where livestock are a critical part of the local economy. The creature is often described as having a somewhat humanoid form but with distinctly animalistic features. Early reports from Puerto Rico described it as having a reptilian appearance with leathery or scaly greenish-gray skin and spines running down its back. Its eyes were said to be large and glowing, contributing to its eerie and menacing presence. As the legend spread, new descriptions emerged. In parts of Mexico and the southwestern United States, El Chupacabra was described as more canine-like, with some witnesses comparing it to a hairless wild dog with exaggerated features such as large fangs and claws. Behaviorally, El Chupacabra is often depicted as a solitary creature, emerging under the cover of night to prey on livestock. It is rarely, if ever, reported to attack humans, but the fear it generates is profound. The creature's ability to drain blood without consuming the flesh of its victims contributes to its supernatural aura, leading many to speculate that it is not just a natural predator but a paranormal entity. This, in turn, fuels various theories about its origin, ranging from alien experimentation to genetic mutations. Cultural Impact and Symbolism The legend of El Chupacabra is more than just a collection of scary stories, it has become a cultural phenomenon, particularly in Latin America. The creature serves as a modern-day boogeyman, embodying fears of the unknown and the unseen. In rural communities where livestock plays a crucial role in survival, the fear of an unseen predator can be particularly potent. El Chupacabra represents these fears, acting as a symbol of the uncontrollable and mysterious forces that threaten everyday life. In a broader cultural context, El Chupacabra has also been interpreted as a symbol of the anxieties brought on by rapid modernization and the erosion of traditional ways of life. As rural communities face increasing pressures from urbanization, economic change, and environmental degradation, the legend of El Chupacabra can be seen as a manifestation of these societal stresses. The creature, lurking on the fringes of civilization, serves as a reminder of the wild, untamed world that still exists outside the bounds of human control. 
Furthermore, El Chupacabra spread beyond Latin America into the United States reflects the fluidity of cultural myths in a globalized world. As the Hispanic population in the U.S. has grown, so too has the influence of Latin American folklore in mainstream American culture. El Chupacabra has appeared in numerous television shows, movies, and books, often as a symbol of the exotic and the terrifying. Its role in popular culture demonstrates how myths can transcend their origins and take on new meanings in different contexts. Theories and Explanations Despite its widespread notoriety, there is no scientific evidence to support the existence of El Chupacabra. However, this has not stopped people from speculating about its origins. Various theories have been proposed to explain the Chupacabra phenomenon, ranging from the plausible to the bizarre. One of the more grounded theories suggests that the sightings of El Chupacabra, particularly the canine-like version, could be attributed to animals suffering from severe mange, a skin disease caused by parasitic mites. Mange can cause animals, such as coyotes, dogs, or raccoons, to lose their fur and develop scaly skin, giving them a somewhat monstrous appearance. This theory gained traction when biologists began examining purported chupacabra carcasses and found that they were often canines afflicted with mange. Another popular theory posits that El Chupacabra is an alien creature, either intentionally released on Earth or stranded here by accident. This idea is fueled by the creature's strange appearance, which some witnesses have described as otherworldly. The fact that the first wave of sightings in Puerto Rico coincided with a period of intense UFO activity on the island further supports this theory in the eyes of believers. This interpretation of El Chupacabra taps into broader themes of extraterrestrial life and the fear of alien encounters, which are prevalent in modern pop culture. Comparison with other cryptids El Chupacabra shares similarities with other cryptids in global mythology, particularly in its role as a mysterious predator. Comparisons are often drawn between El Chupacabra and the vampire, another creature known for draining blood. However, while vampires are typically depicted as human-like and often linked to themes of seduction and immortality, El Chupacabra is more bestial, emphasizing raw predatory instincts. In terms of behavior, El Chupacabra can be likened to the Mothman of American folklore, a creature whose sightings are often associated with impending disaster or death. Both creatures elicit fear and unease, and both have become symbols of larger, perhaps unknowable, forces at work in the world. Like the Mothman, El Chupacabra's presence often coincides with a sense of foreboding and the unknown, contributing to its mythic status. Another interesting comparison is with the werewolf, particularly in regions where El Chupacabra is described in more canine terms. Werewolves, like Chupacabra, straddle the line between human and beast and are often associated with nighttime and rural settings. However, while werewolves are typically humans transformed by a curse or affliction, El Chupacabra is an entirely separate creature, existing outside the human sphere. El Chupacabra in Modern Media the myth of El Chupacabra has found a solid foothold in modern media, from television shows to movies to literature. The creature has appeared in numerous paranormal and cryptid-themed TV shows, often depicted as a dangerous and elusive monster. In these portrayals, El Chupacabra is typically shown as a physical embodiment of fear, its presence creating tension and suspense. Films featuring El Chupacabra range from horror to science fiction, often exploring themes of genetic experimentation, alien life, and the consequences of tampering with nature. These films capitalize on the creature's fearsome reputation, using it as a focal point for stories that delve into humanity's primal fears. The creature's name alone has become synonymous with terror, used to evoke a sense of dread and the unknown. In literature, El Chupacabra is often used as a symbol of cultural and societal anxieties. Authors use the creature to explore themes such as the fear of the other, the clash between tradition and modernity, and the consequences of human hubris. 
These stories often present El Chupacabra not just as a monster but as a reflection of the human psyche, a projection of our deepest fears and insecurities. El Chupacabra, while a relatively recent addition to the pantheon of mythological creatures, has quickly become one of the most iconic. Its roots in Latin American folklore, coupled with its spread across different cultures and regions, make it a fascinating study in how myths evolve and adapt over time. Whether seen as a symbol of cultural anxiety, a cryptid waiting to be discovered, or simply a modern-day horror story, El Chupacabra continues to captivate and terrify. Its enduring appeal lies in its ambiguity, the lack of definitive evidence allows for endless speculation and storytelling. In this way, El Chupacabra serves as a modern myth, a reflection of contemporary fears wrapped in the guise of an ancient predator. As long as there are unexplained events and sightings, the legend of El Chupacabra will endure, continuing to haunt the edges of our collective imagination. Pishtaco the term pishtico is believed to have originated from the Quechua word pishte, which means to behead, cut, or slit the throat. The pishtico is typically described as a white man, often with European features, who preys on indigenous people, killing them to harvest their body fat for various nefarious purposes. This myth has evolved over time, but its core themes of exploitation, fear of the outsider, and bodily violation have remained consistent. Pre-colonial roots While the Pishtaco myth is often associated with the colonial period, it is possible that its roots extend further back into pre-colonial Andean cosmology. Indigenous Andean societies had complex beliefs surrounding the body, life force, and the soul. Fat, in particular, was considered a vital substance, linked to life and spiritual energy. The concept of animu, a kind of vital essence or soul, was tied to the physical body, and fat was seen as a concentrated form of this life force. The preoccupation with bodily integrity and the belief in the sacredness of fat could have contributed to the fear of losing this essential substance. In pre-Columbian times, the idea of someone stealing fat or life force might have been more abstract, perhaps linked to fears of sorcery or spiritual harm. The arrival of Europeans and the brutal realities of colonization would later give this fear a more tangible and human form. Colonial Transformation The Spanish conquest of the Inca Empire in the 16th century marked the beginning of a profound transformation in Andean societies. The conquistadors brought with them not only physical domination, but also a new social order that placed indigenous peoples at the bottom of the hierarchy. The violent exploitation of indigenous labor, particularly in the mines of Potosi and other parts of the Andes, became a central feature of colonial rule. It was during this period that the Pishtaco myth began to take on its more recognizable form. The figure of the Pishtaco, with his European appearance and insatiable hunger for indigenous fat, emerged as a personification of the colonizer's brutality. The myth became a way for indigenous people to express their fears of being literally and figuratively consumed by the invaders. The Pishtaco was not just a killer but a symbol of the exploitation and dehumanization that the indigenous populations experienced under colonial rule. The Pishtaco's methods were said to include luring victims into isolated areas, where they would be killed and their fat extracted. This fat was then supposedly used to grease machinery, treat leather, or even consumed by Europeans to sustain their strength. These gruesome details reflected the real experiences of indigenous people, who saw their land, labor, and lives consumed by a foreign power. Cultural Significance and Symbolism The Pishtaco myth is deeply symbolic, representing various fears and anxieties within Andean culture. At its core, the Pishtaco embodies the fear of the outsider and the threat of exploitation. The myth also reflects deeper themes related to body and soul, life and death, and the social dynamics of power and subjugation. Fear of the Outsider One of the most significant aspects of the Pishtaco myth is its portrayal of the outsider as a threat. In the Andean worldview, the arrival of the Spanish and other Europeans was a cataclysmic event that brought death, disease, and destruction. 
The Pishtico, with his European features, represents this external threat. The fear of the outsider is not just about physical harm, but also about the loss of cultural identity and autonomy. The Pishtico's predation on indigenous people can be seen as a metaphor for the way in which colonial powers sought to strip indigenous cultures of their vitality and essence. Exploitation and bodily violation The Pishtico's focus on harvesting fat is deeply symbolic of the exploitation that indigenous people experienced under colonialism and beyond. Fat, as mentioned earlier, was considered a vital substance in Andean culture, linked to life force and spiritual energy. The idea of someone stealing fat is, therefore, not just a physical violation but a spiritual one as well. The Pishtiko's actions symbolize the extraction of life and labor from indigenous bodies, mirroring the real-life exploitation that took place in the mines, plantations, and other areas where indigenous people were forced to work under brutal conditions. This theme of bodily violation extends to the modern era, where the Pishtiko myth has been adapted to reflect contemporary fears and anxieties. In some versions of the myth, the Pishtiko is said to sell the fat to cosmetic companies, hospitals, or wealthy elites, drawing a parallel with modern forms of exploitation and the commodification of the human body. Social dynamics and resistance The Pishtiko myth also reflects the social dynamics of power and resistance within Andean communities. The Pishtiko is often portrayed as a figure of authority, such as a priest, doctor, or landowner, someone who holds power over indigenous people. This reflects the reality of colonial and post-colonial societies, where indigenous people were often at the mercy of those in positions of authority. However, the Pishtiko myth is not just about victimhood, it also contains elements of resistance. In some versions of the story, the Pishtiko is outwitted or defeated by his would-be victims, reflecting the resilience and defiance of indigenous people in the face of exploitation. The myth can be seen as a way of asserting indigenous identity and agency, even in the face of overwhelming oppression. Modern Interpretations and Adaptations The Pishtiko myth has continued to evolve in the modern era, adapting to new social and cultural contexts. While the core elements of the legend remain, new in urban legends and popular culture, in modern times, the Pishtiko has become a figure in urban legends and popular culture in the Andean region. Stories of Pishtikos are sometimes circulated in rural areas as cautionary tales, warning people to be wary of strangers, particularly those who seem out of place or have a foreign appearance. These stories often reflect current social anxieties, such as the fear of human trafficking, organ theft, or other forms of bodily exploitation. The Pishtiko has also made its way into literature, film, and television. In some cases, the figure is used to explore themes of cultural conflict, globalization, and the lingering effects of colonialism. For example, in the Peruvian film Amadinusa, 2006, by Claudia Losa, the Pishtiko is referenced as a feared outsider, highlighting the tension between traditional indigenous culture and modernity. Political Symbolism The Pishtiko has also been used as a symbol in political discourse, particularly in relation to issues of social justice and indigenous rights. The figure has been invoked in discussions about land rights, environmental degradation, and economic inequality. For instance, in the context of debates over mining and resource extraction in the Andes, the Pishtiko has been used as a metaphor for multinational corporations that exploit natural resources at the expense of local communities. In this way, the Pishtiko continues to serve as a powerful symbol of the ongoing struggles of indigenous people against external forces that seek to exploit and dehumanize them. The myth's ability to adapt to new contexts and concerns ensures its continued relevance in contemporary Andean society. Psychological Interpretations Some scholars have interpreted the Pishtiko myth through a psychological lens, seeing it as a manifestation of collective trauma. The figure of the Pishtiko can be seen as a projection of deep-seated fears and anxieties, rooted in the historical experiences of colonization, exploitation, 
and marginalization. The myth allows these fears to be externalized and given a tangible form, making them easier to confront and understand. This psychological interpretation suggests that the Pishtako myth functions as a coping mechanism, helping communities to process and make sense of their historical experiences. By embodying these fears in the form of a monster, the myth provides a way for people to articulate and share their anxieties, creating a sense of solidarity and mutual understanding. The Pishtako is a complex and multifaceted figure in South American mythology, embodying the fears, anxieties, and historical experiences of Andean societies. From its possible roots in pre-Columbian beliefs about the body and soul, to its transformation into a symbol of colonial exploitation, the Pishtako myth has evolved to reflect the changing social and cultural dynamics of the region. At its core, the Pishtako represents the fear of the outsider and the threat of exploitation, particularly in the context of colonial and post-colonial societies. The myth also speaks to deeper themes of bodily violation, spiritual harm, and the struggle for identity and autonomy in the face of external pressures. In the modern era, the Pishtako continues to be a relevant and powerful symbol, adapting to new contexts and concerns. Whether as a figure in urban legends, a symbol in political discourse, or a subject of psychological analysis, the Pishtako remains a potent representation of the ongoing struggles of Andean communities against exploitation and dehumanization. Ultimately, the enduring power of the Pishtako myth lies in its ability to encapsulate the complex interplay of history, culture, and psychology in the Andean region. By examining this legend, we gain insight not only into the fears and anxieties of the past, but also into the ways in which these continue to shape the present and future of Andean societies. Mapping Gwari The Mapping Gwari, sometimes spelled Mapinguari, is a creature from the folklore of various indigenous groups in the Amazon basin, particularly among the tribes of Brazil, Peru, and Bolivia. The creature's name is derived from the indigenous Tupi Guarani language, where Mapinguari can be loosely translated to mean roaring animal or fetid beast. The myth of the Mapinguari is closely tied to the dense, mysterious, and often dangerous environment of the Amazon rainforest, which is home to countless species of flora and fauna, many of which remain undiscovered or poorly understood by science. The Amazon rainforest, known as the lungs of the earth, has long been a source of life, sustenance, and spiritual significance for the indigenous peoples who inhabit its vast expanse. The forest is not just a physical space, but a spiritual entity filled with beings that embody the forces of nature, both benevolent and malevolent. In this context, the Mapinguari can be seen as a manifestation of the rainforest's dangers, a warning to those who would venture too far into its depths without respect for the natural world and its inhabitants. Characteristics of the Mapinguari Descriptions of the Mapinguari vary among different cultures and storytellers, but some common features are often mentioned. The creature is typically described as a large, bipedal beast, standing anywhere from six to nine feet tall. It is covered in thick, matted fur, usually red or brown, and emits a foul odor that can be smelled from a great distance at a smell so overpowering that it is said to incapacitate or even kill those who come too close. One of the most distinctive and terrifying features of the Mapinguari is its single, large, blood-red eye, located in the center of its forehead. This eye is believed to have the power to paralyze its victims with a mere glance. Some versions of the legend also describe the creature as having a second mouth on its stomach, filled with sharp, jagged teeth. This grotesque feature is often interpreted as a symbol of insatiable hunger or as a manifestation of the creature's monstrous nature. In addition to its fearsome appearance, the Mapinguari is said to possess supernatural abilities. It is often described as invulnerable to bullets, arrows, and other conventional weapons, making it nearly impossible to kill. The creature is also known for its eerie, bone-chilling roar, which echoes through the forest and strikes fear into the hearts of those who hear it. 
Some stories even suggest that the Mapinguari can control the weather, summoning storms and floods to protect its territory or to punish those who disrespect the forest. The Mapinguari in Indigenous Beliefs For the indigenous peoples of the Amazon, the Mapinguari is more than just a scary story, it is a guardian of the forest, a powerful spirit that embodies the untamed and unpredictable nature of the wilderness. In many cultures, the Mapinguari is seen as a protector of the environment, punishing those who harm the forest or take more than they need from its resources. This aspect of the myth reflects the deep respect and reverence that indigenous peoples have for the natural world, as well as their belief in the interconnectedness of all living things. The Mapinguari is also associated with shamanism and the spiritual practices of the Amazonian tribes. Shamans, who serve as spiritual leaders and healers within their communities, are said to have the ability to communicate with the Mapinguari and other spirits of the forest. In some stories, shamans can call upon the Mapinguari for protection or to seek its guidance. However, this relationship is often portrayed as one of mutual respect rather than control, the Mapinguari is not a creature to be commanded, but rather one to be honored and appeased. The Mapinguari's role as a guardian of the forest also ties into broader themes of environmental stewardship and sustainability, which are central to many indigenous belief systems. The creature's fearsome reputation serves as a reminder of the consequences of disrupting the natural balance and the importance of living in harmony with the land. Modern Interpretations and Scientific Speculation the legend of the Mapinguari has persisted into modern times, with sightings and reports of the creature continuing to emerge from the Amazon rainforest. These accounts have sparked the interest of cryptozoologists, researchers who study animals that have not been proven to exist, such as Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster. Some cryptozoologists believe that the Mapinguari could be based on a real, albeit undiscovered, species of animal. One popular theory suggests that the Mapinguari might be a remnant population of prehistoric ground sloths, known as Megatherium, which roamed South America during the Pleistocene Epoch. These giant sloths were herbivores, but they were enormous, standing up to 20 feet tall when on their hind legs, and could have easily been mistaken for a monstrous creature by early humans. The thick fur, large size, and formidable claws of the Megatherium might have contributed to the descriptions of the Mapinguari, and the foul odor could be explained by the scent gland that some species of sloths possess. Other scientists are more skeptical, arguing that the Mapinguari is purely a mythological figure, a product of the human imagination rather than a reflection of a real animal. They point out that the Amazon rainforest is a place of immense biodiversity, where new species are discovered regularly but no concrete evidence of the Mapinguari has ever been found. Instead, they suggest that the legend may have arisen as a way for indigenous peoples to explain the dangers of the forest or to instill a sense of caution and respect in those who enter it. Regardless of its origins, the Mapinguari continues to capture the popular imagination. The creature has appeared in various forms of media, including books, documentaries, and television shows, often portrayed as a mysterious and terrifying beast that lurks in the depths of the Amazon. This modern fascination with the Mapinguari reflects a broader interest in cryptids and the unknown, as well as a recognition of the enduring power of folklore and myth. The Mapinguari as a symbol The Mapinguari, like many mythical creatures, serves as a symbol that carries multiple layers of meaning. On one level, it represents the primal fear of the unknown, the terror of encountering a creature that defies explanation and understanding. The Mapinguari's grotesque appearance, supernatural abilities, and connection to the untamed wilderness all contribute to this sense of dread. However, the Mapinguari is also a symbol of the natural world's power and resilience. In an age when the Amazon rainforest faces unprecedented threats from deforestation, climate change, and industrial development, the Mapinguari can be seen as a guardian of the environment, a reminder of the consequences of exploiting the land without regard for the delicate balance of nature.
The creature's invulnerability to weapons and its role as a protector of the forest underscore the idea that the natural world is not easily subdued or conquered. Moreover, the Mapinguari embodies the wisdom and spiritual beliefs of the indigenous peoples who have lived in harmony with the Amazon for millennia. The creature's connection to shamanism and its role as a guardian of the forest reflect the deep spiritual relationship that these cultures have with the land. In this sense, the Mapinguari is a symbol of cultural continuity, a link between the past and the present that preserves the ancient knowledge and traditions of the Amazonian tribes. The Mapinguari is a fascinating and complex figure in South American mythology, representing both the fearsome power of the natural world and the deep spiritual connection that indigenous peoples have with their environment. Whether viewed as a guardian of the forest, a symbol of environmental stewardship, or a manifestation of primal fears, the Mapinguari continues to captivate the imagination and inspire stories that resonate with themes of respect, balance, and the enduring mysteries of the natural world. As the Amazon rainforest faces increasing threats, the legend of the Mapinguari takes on new significance, serving as a reminder of the importance of preserving the natural world and honoring the wisdom of those who have long lived in harmony with it. The Mapinguari may be a creature of myth, but its message is one that remains relevant in the modern world, a call to protect the forests, respect the forces of nature, and remember that not all mysteries are meant to be solved. Sashamama The Sashamama is a central figure in the mythology of the Andean civilizations, particularly among the Quechua and Aymara peoples. The term Sashamama roughly translates to Mother of the Forest, or Forest Mother in Quechua. This name reflects its deep connection to the natural world, particularly the forests and mountains that are vital to Andean life. In Andean cosmology, nature is not merely a backdrop but an integral part of the spiritual and physical existence of its people. The Andean worldview is deeply animistic, meaning that every element of nature, whether it's a mountain, river, or tree, possesses a spirit or essence. The Sashamama embodies this belief as a powerful entity that merges the serpentine form with the nurturing aspects of the earth. The physical and symbolic form. The Sashamama is often depicted as a colossal serpent or snake, sometimes with features that suggest its integration with the forest. It might have scales resembling leaves or vines, and its body is often entwined with the natural elements of the Andes. This hybrid form underscores its role as a guardian and protector of the natural world. Symbolically, the Sashamama represents the duality of nature, its capacity to both nurture and destroy. As a serpent, it possesses the potential for both great wisdom and great danger. This dual nature reflects the broader Andean understanding of nature's balance, where creation and destruction are interconnected and equally important for the cyclical process of life. Role in Mythology and Rituals In Andean mythology, the Sashamama is often associated with fertility, agriculture, and the health of the forest. It is believed to have the power to ensure bountiful harvests and to protect the land from harm. The serpent is also a guardian of sacred knowledge and secrets hidden within the earth. Rituals and ceremonies dedicated to the Sashamama typically involve offerings of food, coca leaves, and other items to appease and honor the serpent. These offerings are made at sacred sites in the mountains or forests, where the presence of the Sashamama is believed to be strongest. In some traditions, the ritual involves invoking the spirit of the Sashamama to bless the fields and ensure a successful growing season. The Sashamama also plays a role in the mythology of creation and the underworld. According to some legends, the serpent was one of the primordial beings that helped shape the world. It is said to dwell in the depths of the earth, where it guards the treasures and secrets of the world. This association with the underworld reinforces the idea that the Sashamama holds profound and ancient knowledge, connecting the physical world with the spiritual realm. Influence on daily life and culture The reverence for the Sashamama extends beyond myth and ritual into the daily lives of the Andean people. 
The serpent symbolism influences various aspects of Andean culture, from art and folklore to agricultural practices. In traditional Andean art, the Sashamama is often depicted in intricate designs, reflecting its importance and the respect it commands. Agriculturally, the presence of the Sashamama is considered essential for maintaining harmony with the land. Farmers may perform specific rituals or offer prayers to ensure that the serpent's favor is gained, thereby securing the health and fertility of their crops. This practice underscores the deep connection between the Andean peoples and their environment, highlighting a sustainable approach to agriculture that honors the spirits of nature. The Sashamama also serves as a metaphor for social and community values. Its role as a protector of the forest and nurturer of life mirrors the communal responsibilities that are highly valued in Andean societies. Just as the Sashamama is believed to safeguard the land, community members are expected to protect and support one another, fostering a sense of collective responsibility and care. Comparisons and Variations the Sashamama's characteristics and role share similarities with serpent deities in other cultures, such as the Quetzalcoatl of Mesoamerican mythology or the Nga of South Asian traditions. These comparisons highlight a common symbolic association of serpents with wisdom, fertility, and the underworld across different cultures. However, each serpent figure is deeply embedded in its own cultural context, reflecting unique aspects of the societies that revere them. In some variations of Andean mythology, the Sashamama is paired with another serpent deity, the Sachasirama or Father of the Forest, creating a complementary duality. While the Sashamama is often associated with nurturing and fertility, the Sachasirama may represent strength and protection. Together, they embody the balance between growth and defense in the natural world. Modern Relevance and Preservation In contemporary times, the myth of the Sashamama continues to hold significance for Andean communities. Efforts to preserve traditional knowledge and practices include maintaining the rituals and ceremonies associated with the serpent. These efforts are crucial in the face of modernization and environmental changes that threaten the traditional ways of life. Cultural preservation initiatives often involve educating younger generations about the myths, rituals, and values associated with the Sashamama. This includes integrating traditional knowledge into modern education and community activities to ensure that the cultural heritage is not lost. Additionally, environmental movements that focus on protecting the Andean ecosystems often draw inspiration from the spiritual principles embodied by the Sashamama, reinforcing the connection between cultural and environmental stewardship. The Sashamama is a profound symbol within South American mythology, representing the intersection of nature, spirituality, and community. As a serpent deity, it embodies the duality of creation and destruction, nurturing and protecting the natural world. Through its roles in mythology, ritual, and daily life, the Sashamama reflects the deep respect and interdependence that Andean cultures have with their environment. Understanding the Sashamama provides valuable insights into the broader Andean worldview, where nature and spirituality are inextricably linked. As societies continue to evolve, the preservation and celebration of myths like that of the Sashamama remain essential in maintaining cultural identity and fostering a sustainable relationship with the natural world. El Lobizon El Lobizon's roots are a confluence of indigenous South American mythology and European werewolf legends brought over by Spanish and Portuguese colonizers. Indigenous cultures in South America had their own shape-shifting beings and spiritual entities, which over time merged with the European concept of the werewolf, or lobo, in Spanish. This synthesis resulted in the creation of El Lobizon, a being both feared and intriguing in South American folklore. Appearance and Characteristics El Lobizon is typically depicted as a human who transforms into a wolf or wolf-like creature during a full moon. This transformation is often triggered by a curse, a spell, or a family curse that has been passed down through generations. 
the human form of El Lobizon might appear as a regular man, but he is marked by certain telltale signs that set him apart from ordinary people. These signs include a peculiar physical appearance, unusual behaviors, or specific omens associated with him. In his wolf form, El Lobizon is described as a monstrous, terrifying creature with fierce yellow eyes and a hunger for human flesh. His appearance is often exaggerated with grotesque features, embodying the primal fear of the unknown that wolves and shapeshifters represent in many cultures. Legends and Beliefs The lore surrounding El Lobizon varies slightly from region to region, but common threads weave through the stories. One prevalent belief is that the transformation into El Lobizon occurs when a person is cursed or is a victim of dark magic. In some versions, only the seventh son of a family is believed to become El Lobizon, a belief that reflects the significance of the number seven in various South American and European traditions. The seventh son legend has a particular resonance in Argentine and Uruguayan folklore. It is said that families with seven male children are cursed, and the seventh son will inevitably become El Lobizon. This curse is considered a serious and fearful fate, and various rituals or protective measures were traditionally employed to prevent or mitigate the curse. Role in Folklore and Society El Lobizon plays a multifaceted role in folklore. On one hand, he serves as a cautionary figure, a warning against the consequences of dark magic, curses, or moral failings. On the other hand, he is also a reflection of societal fears and anxieties. The legend often incorporates themes of alienation, punishment, and the supernatural as a way to explain and cope with unexplained phenomena or moral transgressions. In some stories, El Lobizan is seen as a tragic figure, cursed to live a dual existence and condemned to a life of isolation and torment. This portrayal evokes sympathy and highlights the theme of the outcast who suffers from forces beyond his control. The myth thus serves as both a narrative of horror and a poignant reflection on human suffering and destiny. Rituals and Protection Throughout South American history, various rituals and practices have emerged as protective measures against El Lobizan. These practices often involve the use of religious symbols, charms, or prayers. In some regions, it was customary to perform rituals to break the curse or to protect children from becoming El Lobizan. For example, in rural areas of Argentina, special ceremonies might be conducted to ensure that the seventh son of a family does not fall victim to the curse. Additionally, the use of religious artifacts like holy water or blessed amulets could be employed to ward off the influence of El Lobizan. Influence on popular culture El Lobizan has significantly influenced popular culture in South America. The legend has been adapted into various forms of media, including literature, films, and television shows. In contemporary South American cinema and literature, El Lobizan often appears as a central character, reflecting the enduring fascination and fear associated with this mythological being. The legend also resonates in the music and art of the region, where El Lobizan is sometimes depicted as a symbol of the darker aspects of human nature and the mysterious forces of the supernatural. These cultural representations continue to keep the myth alive and relevant in modern South American society. Comparative Analysis El Lobizan can be compared to other werewolf legends from around the world such as the European werewolf or the North American skinwalker. While there are similarities, such as the transformation into a beast and the association with curses or dark magic, there are also distinct differences. El Lobizon's connection to specific family curses and regional beliefs sets it apart from other werewolf myths. In European folklore, Werewolves are often portrayed as individuals who can transform into wolves through magical means or as a result of a curse. The South American El Lobizan shares this transformative aspect but is more closely tied to familial and regional beliefs, reflecting the unique cultural context in which it developed. Similarly, in North American indigenous cultures, shapeshifters like the Skinwalker also play a significant role, 
but their law is distinct from that of El Lobazan. Skinwalkers are often associated with complex spiritual and cultural practices, while El Lobazan is more centered around the themes of family curses and supernatural punishment. El Lobazan stands as a powerful symbol in South American mythology, representing a blend of indigenous and European influences. His story encapsulates themes of transformation, curse, and the supernatural, reflecting broader cultural anxieties and moral lessons. As a figure who straddles the line between human and beast, El Lobazan continues to captivate the imagination and serve as a reminder of the mysterious and often frightening aspects of the human experience. In modern times, El Lobazan remains a significant part of South American folklore and popular culture, illustrating the enduring power of myths and legends to shape and reflect cultural identities. Thanks for joining us on this journey through South American mythology. We hope you enjoyed exploring these captivating tales and legendary figures as much as we did. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more deep dives into fascinating cultures and their myths. Share your thoughts or favorite myths in the comments below, we love hearing from you. For more content like this, check out our other videos and follow us on social media for updates. Until next time, keep exploring the wonders of the world's rich mythological tapestry.